Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God which I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the first scripture reading that Pastor Adi just read for you. I share with you today at verse 1. A man named Ananias and his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and kept some of the profit for themselves. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Well, today I'm continuing to talk with you about how God has created each one of us to make a difference for him in this world. And so specifically today, I want to talk with you about how doing good things for God and others, it's great to do that. But God wants us to do them quietly. In God's word before us today, God gives us a very, very serious story about a man named Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. Now, in order to help you to better understand this story, let me share it with you from a more modern point of view. Ananias and Sapphira, they're really excited. They just got a check for $15,000 in the mail. You see, they got and were so much more encouraged than what they ever thought was possible. They had this piece of land for a while. They got it from a, a rich uncle who died as an inheritance, and they had just kind of let it set for a while. They didn't think very much about this piece of land until there was a man in their church. His name was Barnabas, and he had a piece of land, and he sold it, and he gave all the money from the land he sold to the church. Well, after he did that, the people in the church admired and respected him. They all went up to him and told him how much they loved him, and they all wanted to be his friend. Well, Ananias and Sapphira said, you know, we should do that. Because then people would think a lot better of us. And so Ananias and Sapphira thought to themselves, let's take this piece of land that we have, let's sell it, and let's give all the money to the church. Great idea, right? Well, like I said, that land sold for $15,000. They only expected it to sell for like $10,000. And so they're shocked when they have this check now for $15,000. What are they going to do? Well, they think about it. And Ananias and Sapphira come up with the idea that let's just tell everyone that we got $10,000 for the piece of property and that we gave it all to the church. And so that's what they did. Well, the next Sunday comes along and Ananias gets up and he's excited as he shares with the people, my wife Sapphira and myself, we have this piece of land and we're going to sell it and we're going to give all the money from the sale of the land to the church. Well, as you can imagine, all the people are clapping for them. They're all excited. After church, they run up to them, tell them how wonderful they are and how much they love and appreciate them. And Ananias and Sapphira, they figure that they've got away with the cover-up. No one knows. It was very successful. Sunday afternoon comes along, and the leaders of the church ask Ananias to come to the church for a meeting that afternoon. Well, Ananias think they're just going to have me come so they can congratulate me on my gift. In fact, I think they might even plan a dinner party for me and my wife. So, as you can imagine, Ananias is going to church that day, all excited and feeling good about himself. He gets to the church, and the Bible says that one of the leaders of the church, his name was Peter, Peter asked him four simple questions. Question number one, Ananias, why has Satan so filled your heart that you've lied to the Holy Spirit? You lied about how much money you got from the property you sold. 
Oh, no. Now Ananias' cover-up has been revealed. The secret's out. The leaders of the church know. Oh, no, what's going to happen? Well, Peter asks another question. He says question number two. While the land remained, was it not your own? No one forced you, Ananias, to sell this land. You could have done whatever you wanted with the land. Question number three. After the land was sold, wasn't it in your control? In other words, Ananias, you could have done whatever you wanted with the money you got from the sale of that church. You could have changed the amount you gave to the church. You didn't have to tell everybody that you gave all the money you got from the sale of the land to the church. Question number four. Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? This was no accident, was it? Ananias and Sapphira, they deliberately misled the people here. They deliberately lied to them. So Peter said to Ananias, you haven't lied to men, to human beings, but you've lied to God. And immediately Ananias falls to the ground and he dies. Wow. He's dead. Well, the leaders of the church, they then called up Sapphira and invited Sapphira to come to the church. And again, Sapphira thought, this is great. They just want to come and thank me and congratulate me too. Now, when Sapphira gets to the church, Peter gives her an opportunity to tell the truth. Peter simply asks her, how much money did you receive from the sale of your land. Was it $10,000? And Sapphira said, yes, it was $10,000. And Peter looks at her and says, Sapphira, why are you lying to God? Your husband just told a lie to God, and he's now dead. And you're going to die too. And immediately Sapphira falls to the ground and she's dead. Wow. She's dead. Was that all really necessary? I mean, Ananias and Sapphira, they should have been punished for their lie. But this, death, that seems really strong, doesn't it? But look here at what they did. They used God's church to promote themselves. They wanted everyone to love them, to honor them, instead of honoring God. God has a strong word for what they did. The word's called hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is pretending to be something you're not. Jesus hated hypocrisy in his church. You'll probably remember the time when Jesus said to the religious leaders, why do you stand in church praying in a way so everybody just looks at you? So everybody just watches you. Jesus didn't like it when there was hypocrisy in his church. Now notice here, Jesus didn't say that people shouldn't do good things for God and for others. He didn't say that at all. And Jesus didn't say that the good things we do are not sometimes seen by others. That's okay. I mean, sometimes you, a, a, a friend of yours falls to the ground and you help him up and people see that. Sometimes you help out your neighbor with something in the lawn and people around see that. Sometimes you, you bring uh, food to the church to, to help hungry people in our area, and people see that. Sometimes you bring things to church and they're to, you know, for elderly or for children, and people see that, and that's okay. It's good 
to do good things. It's just the reason for doing your good thing is what comes into question. Jesus doesn't want us just to do good things, so everybody will tell us how great we are. That turns people away from God, doesn't it? Just think for a moment. If you came here to church today, and you're expecting to hear the great news that Jesus died on a cross and rose from the dead to forgive your sins, to overcome death for you so that you can live with him forever in heaven. But instead of hearing that great news, you just hear the pastor get up and tell you how great he is. And he tells you that every one of you should imitate him and be like him. Well, that's going to not cause a good reaction from you, is it? Or what if somebody's visiting our church today and all they see is the members of our church uh, talking about themselves and building themselves up and they're not hearing anything about God, it's all about the people. Well, that's going to turn them against God and his church, isn't it? They probably won't come back. And that God doesn't want that in his church. Jesus is very serious here about the Christian church. Jesus wants us to honor him and appreciate him in his church. Now, how can we do that? Let me give you some real specific ways we can honor God. First, don't expect to get credit for all the good things that you do. God always knows what you're doing. And God always appreciates you. We have so many people in our church that just this morning did all kinds of little things that none of you really have seen, none of you are aware of, but it makes our worship experience possible. Those are all great things that they've done. And God knows it. And God appreciates it. Second, give your financial gifts in secret. We have so many wonderful folks like you that are generous and you're giving to the Lord, and it's all great, but no one knows but you and God what you give to the church. You don't have to tell everybody what you've given. We don't have to publish what everybody gives. We do those things with God, right? And then thirdly, don't fake being a Christian. You know, don't pray in such a way that everybody's just watching you. Or don't talk with all these big Christian words just to impress others so they'll think what a great Christian you are. No, be honest and sincere in your love and your worship of Jesus. God gives us this very serious story today to teach us how we can really make a difference for him in this world. Resist the desire to be noticed by others. Act on the desire to serve God and others. But do good things quietly to serve God and to serve others. God's going to always notice you. God's going to always appreciate you. God's going to always bless you. Amen. Let's now stand and join together in the next song of praise.